Hey, this is Marta Ambrosius, and you're all tuned into The Biz with D. All right, everybody, you guys are now tuned into The Biz with D, of course, and we have Marsha Ambrosius on the line right now. And if you guys don't know who Marsha is, Marsha was part of the phenomenal group Flow a Tree. Um, she has an album out that is called Late Night, Early Mornings. Marsha's on with us. How you doing, Marsha? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for coming good. on the show this evening. We appreciate it. Not a problem. So I first got to ask you, being in the group Flow a Tree, you know, how was um, just like the chemistry between you and um, Natalie? I mean, it was amazing. We've known each other for, for years back in London, you know, coming from, well, different parts of South London, but going to mm-hmm. the same school. And um, prior to that, you know, completely aware of each other's individual talents. I knew that Nat was into acting and poetry. So by the time we left school and I was producing and writing for many other artists, I wasn't really concentrating on being in a, a group or anything, but I did have a couple of songs that I'd, you know, pushed to the side. As you know, Britain wasn't really receptive of R&B music on the scale that I wanted to perform at, so I kind of just left everything on the back burner until I um, had the bright idea that one of my songs, Fantasize, would sound great with a poet on it. So Floetry kind of happened by accident, but by a glorious you know, <laughs> brainwave that I had that day that just kind of worked out. So, you know, three albums later, well, not really three albums, two albums and a live album, which uh, ended in all of 2006. You know, you fast forward to 2013 and it's just completely two different things. You know, back then, Flow Tree was what it was and the combination was uh, perfect. And... um right. It exercised its entire options, and, you know, we became two different people, and here we are now. Like I said, my favorite song was Say Yes, and when you guys recorded that song, I, you know, just want to ask that about that song particularly, then I just want to really focus on you. Because my no, 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 it, it's, I mean, it's, it's it's crazy, like, Say Yes, like, Natalie didn't write a word of, of Say Yes, like, she wasn't even in the studio, I actually recorded mm-hmm. that for for Ron Isley, and he oh, wow. didn't take it. It was a demo, and like the same thing with Butterflies. Butterflies is a part of uh, a flow tree care package, if you will, that was okay. shopping a deal. It just so happens that, you know, they're the only records that, you know, I wrote solely for other people. Like, even with Say Yes, the people are like, oh, Miss Flow Tree, I miss Say Yes, and Say Yes is like the, <laughs> the one song that she wasn't even in the studio to even hear that being created. So it's kind of the irony yeah oh wow so when you write your music like where do you get the um inspiration behind your lyrical content oh it's really from the the moment in time like right now i don't know it's it was supposed to be a snowstorm outside so i was all prepared for you know a cold war moment and i look outside Mm -hmm. and it's nice (laughs) so it was you know completely change the mood as to where I thought I was going to go. So, you know, I kind of, I just, you know, pull from my surroundings at all times. Even with Say Yes, it was just a, a late night, no, no pun intended, with um, Andre Harris in the B room of A Touch of Jazz in Philadelphia, and it just called for that moment. The same thing with late nights and early mornings. I was here in Philly again, and I had an early morning interview that day, and I knew it was going to be a late night in the studio, and I had an art party to do, and all of these other things. So the the songs they kind of write themselves. <laughs> like mm-hmm. I think I'm just the vessel. I'm like, oh, I'm here. I'll sing it. <laughs> like whatever happens, <laughs> and they just kind of they just kind of happen. I know that's right because I I'm an artist as well, and I write songs, and I'm just like, well, that's what the beat said to write. It was it wasn't what I wanted to say. Exactly. I was having this down. conversation with my uh, keyboard player yesterday, and I was like, sometimes the music tells you what to do. You don't even mm-hmm. think like that, <laughs> but the music speaks to you. So you kind of just, you know, you get in the mood and you go where it tells you to go. Definitely. And I, another favorite song of mine, which actually is from yours. Is um I hope she cheats on you with a basketball player. Um, no, can I just say that? <laughs> can I say that record is really deep, and I feel like men can understand that straight, gay, bi, 
uh, women, straight, gay, bi, whatever, can really understand the it's, it's the ego behind group. it. And that, like you said, it's, it's for anyone. Anyone knows how it feels to get their ego bruised. And with a title like that, my, my background is basketball. My first boyfriend was a basketball player. My mm-hmm. dad's a coach. My brother played. I played prior to me doing this music thing. So it will make sense that I'd want you to be cheated on with a six foot nine fine thing <laughs> that makes a hundred plus <laughs> million dollars. And you're going to feel some type of way about, you know, your new girl cheating on you with him versus your new girl cheating on you with the UPS guy. Even though my UPS guy is cute and I was still dating him, <laughs> but it wouldn't, you know, make him feel any type of way. So I just wanted to feel some type of way. And um, definitely Hoshi Cheats was one of those moments. Wow. Well, I, well, you know what they say about the guys that have the um, not so high or up kind of good paying jobs. The ones that have the better personality sometimes. So, uh huh. Sometimes you have to take people down to size. <laughs> I do that through music. <laughs> oh my goodness, you are too funny. And I want to um. Before we, you know, we talk about Cold War, phenomenal single. I wanted to ask you about collaborating with um, artists like The Game and Busta Rhymes. And, you know, like, how was that for you? Amazing. Like, it was really um, the transition in between, you know, me stepping out on my own and, you know, getting back into my writing and producing. And um, I remember a poetry show that Dr. Dre had attended, and he'd invited me to the studio while I've done and he really wanted to to work with me, and I really wanted to work with him. Like just being under the wing of someone that it has been so influential on the on the hip hop side of things, and just in music. Period. I wanted to learn so much from him. So in doing so, he did have the game project. He did have the Busta Rhymes project, and I really got to be hands on in all of these different things, just in getting to meet and new people that were aware of you know my writing capabilities and my performance capabilities. So. I'm glad that I got to, you know, buckle down with, with Dre for the time that I had um, over there. Definitely. So what artists would you like to, you know, work with that we um, haven't seen you work with or you haven't worked with on this new album, though? Um, That's difficult to say because I, I kind of just do the work and see mm-hmm. what happens. I mean, when I wrote... Butterflies. I had no idea that Michael Jackson was going to do it. I thought that was just a song I wrote about some guy that I had a crush on that worked in McDonald's in Camberwell in oh, London. Wow. And I thought that was all it was ever going to be. And it turned into an epic moment and pivotal point in my career. So for me to then say, oh, you know, I wish I'd worked with Sting or I wish I'd worked with Earth, Wind & Fire. Oh, I've worked with Earth, Wind & Fire. crazy. I've worked with Earth, Wind & Fire. I can't throw you out any names that mm-hmm. I hadn't already done or I possibly haven't even thought of yet. And it's going to be another moment. So I'm just going to keep my head down, keep studying, keep working hard and see what happens. And it all it all kind of works out in the end. Wow. <laughs> And you know what, Marsha, I really love that answer because when I commonly ask that question on my show, you know, people will shoot like, oh, my gosh, Beyonce, oh, my gosh, Rodney Jerkins. But people never really, be, like, really think, and they're like, you know what, I might need to study up more in my craft, or, you know what, there's always room, you know, room, room for improvement. Sorry. So maybe I should just, you know, be for the moment, let things happen organically more so than like, yo, let's do a song together. Yeah, because if I said years ago, oh, I wish I'd worked with Justin Timberlake and it didn't happen, it just so happens that it did, and it just so happens that the one time it did, I won a Grammy for it. Wow. And I didn't know that was going to happen. I just thought he was passing through Philadelphia. He had this song called Cry Me a River that I did background vocals and arrangements on, and I had no clue what that moment was going to be until it happened. So I couldn't have called it. I'm just, like I said, once again, just putting in the work and reaping the benefits of of really, really acting like this is my job and not just a Mm -hmm. hobby and not just something I'm put in the forefront because I have the opportunity. I think many people become opportunists. I want to make sure that the work is 100% before I'm just on a song because I can be. That's like me saying, oh, I'm going to 
you know, act in a movie and Steven Spielberg is going to direct it tomorrow. I've never taken an acting class in my life. I don't want to dive in the deep end like that. <laughs> I want to make sure that I'm completely 100% prepared that when Michael Jackson does say, okay, I want butterflies and you're vocally producing me, I need to know that I'm ready to walk in that room and do my job. No, be a groupie, no, be a fan, not faint like I want to every day that I almost did, but do the work. And the work is evident. When you press play, it's seamless. You listen to my demo, you listen to him, and there's no difference. We're there. It's, it's the synergy, the chemistry, and that's every collaboration I've ever managed to do, whether that's Michael Jackson, whether that's The Game, whether that's Outcast, whether that's Common, Nas, anyone I've ever worked with, I've always made it where me and that person had to have a connection. And that's mm -hmm. why all my collaborations work out so well. Absolutely. And they and they definitely do. I mean, with the hearing your demos and then hearing um, the final product of what that artist, you know, what they do, all similarity. Not, it does seem like there's not any big change. And, and, it's, and it's beautiful because nowadays, I mean, you know, you know, the person will say, oh, I'll take your song, and they want to add a whole bunch of, unnecessary stuff in there but it's good to, it's like you know what let's trust what Marsha already has it's beautiful let me not add a whole bunch of woo woo woos and a whole I mean bunch of you know people ads. put their thing on it the woo 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 is <laughs> necessary so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know it's a call for you know when it's not called for the like you said the music speaks for itself and um, I'm so thankful that I've had that opportunity to work with so many creative people, so many amazing people that make what I do easier because they work just as hard and put as much work in as I do. So I've, I've just been blessed thus far. Absolutely. And just real quick, let's talk about the um, EP that you put out before we talk, you know, Friends and Lovers and uh, Cold War. Let's talk about that EP because it was phenomenal for those. Oh, thank you. Um, Ordeves was just a, a taster of, of music that I knew um, was for right now. Mm -hmm. And I had the type of fans that they're patient to a degree, <laughs> but then, you know, <laughs> you get the, when's the release date, when's the release date, I've broke two CDs late nights, early mornings, my iPhone don't work no more because I played you out. I get those emails and texts and tweets and Facebook statuses and all kinds of stuff from fans. And I'm like, look, I'm trying to give you something to kind of tie you over, something to keep you in the mood for, you know, the main course. And that's why I, I titled it Hors d'oeuvres, which is the appetizers, which gives you a taste or a glimpse of where I am creatively. So even with songs like Expect This and um, Slow Motion and you know, F and get it over with, that's that's how I feel. That's how I felt in those moments. And I knew that there were many of my core fan base that if you've ever seen me um, live, I speak to my audience. I pull from everyone's, you know, viewpoint. And I think this was a, a great moment for people to feel out where I am. Absolutely. And definitely was a taste into... Uh... Friends and lovers and Cold War. Let's talk about the. Um, let's talk about Cold War. I mean, the b video is phenomenal. The message behind Thanks. it is phenomenal. Anytime. So you know, tell the listeners how you got the inspiration to just write that record. Um, I actually had the demo. Um, Diplo produced it. Elijah Blake wrote it. Well, Diplo and the Placard Brothers. Um. And I heard the demo, and I was like, this song is amazing. Like, I just felt the the pain in it, and I felt the... I, was, I definitely related to it and knew how many people could relate to that moment. So when I sat with um, Elijah and myself in the studio, we were going over lyrics and um, things that he'd said, and I was trying to give it a, a more of a, a vulnerable... Um, position on it, you know, coming from a female's perspective, you know, he's a guy, and guys will say something in songs that, you know, I'm not necessarily going to say, so I wanted to give it um, a softer approach to that pain, and the way we collaborated 
lyrically on it, um, it married the music. Like when it comes on, whether you're just listening to the the music itself, it still speaks mm-hmm. to you. It still feels like it's snowing outside. It still feels like your heart <laughs> is lonely and love is never gonna come back. And then by the time you get to the song, it's um, almost liberating. It's almost like you're you're gonna fight. If you want to fight for that love, you need to stand up and fight for it. Like you can stay here in the freezing cold if you want to, but I'm gonna put a chinchilla on. <laughs> I'm gonna be out here in the cold, struggling and you know keeping it moving. So that's what Cold War definitely did for me. Absolutely beautiful. So from um, friends and lovers, what can we expect from that album overall? You can expect me to give my give my all. My entire heart is on this album. It's very. It's honest to a fault. It's honest to the point where I know I'm probably going to get a bunch of phone calls like you didn't need to tell our business. <laughs> but look, sometimes the music, like I said, the music spoke to me and I had to tell it. So I was kind of um, vulnerable. I was in a very vulnerable position and that was the perfect place for me to be to, to write and create this album. So I know it's um, almost an autobiography. Right, okay, and it comes out in um in April, correct? I'm not going to give you any dates. I just know that it's done and paperwork is being drawn up and signed. So make sure everyone gets paid, make sure these samples are cleared, and then you'll have it. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm excited. But, Marsha, thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm looking forward to the album, and I'm looking forward to um, actually, because I'm going to, See you at the Wilmington, Delaware concert. So I'm really looking forward to meeting Perfect. you, and snapping the moment. So um, I'm just so happy for you. Oh, thank you, darling. I appreciate You're that. You're welcome. So, um, any final remarks um, before I let you go? I love everyone. Thank you so much for riding with me on this crazy 13 year old relationship I have with the United States. And you've embraced me so much. I'm just looking forward to, you know, giving back everything that you've given me and taking it a little further this time. So I'll see you out there at new the tour, everything. Just follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, wherever wherever it may be. Google it. <laughs> You'll find me somewhere. <laughs> Season. Absolutely. Well, Marsha, thank you so much again. And I will see you um, like close to almost like a, nearly a month <laughs> from now, basically. Right, exactly, next month. So I'll see you soon. So I'm looking forward to it, and you have a great rest of the evening. Thank you again. Thank you.